As you start each day, you can look forward to a new adventure in living. But you will need to equip yourself with the right attitudes to wring the most out of every moment. Let's recapitulate some of the points that you should think about as you start each new day. These are your daily dozen attitudes. One, truth. Has your truth about yourself been false? Most people tend to downgrade their abilities, their human assets. They dwell on their failures and overlook their successes. Is your truth about yourself related to you? Or is it an alien concept, divorced from reality and destroying you from within? Learn to see the real truth. Learn to see yourself as you really are at your best moments. Two, imagination. Here is a wonderful tool, but most people fail to cultivate it. Neglected fields will not produce prolific crops. A neglected imagination will not lead you into the green pastures of an abundant life. Learn to use mental picturing to plot your way to a better future. Keep on imagining yourself functioning within the framework of success until your success pictures blot out your failure pictures. Make your imagination a friend to be treasured instead of a storehouse of fears. Three, relaxation. Life is short. The individual who wastes it worrying throws away this precious gift that God gives him. Practice forgiveness, for forgiveness soothes the feelings and brings peace of mind. Forgive because no one is perfect. When you hold a grudge against someone for years, you may be blaming him for an inconsiderate act that you, in your own imperfection, might have committed. Accept others with their human faults and relax with yourself, fallible as you are. Relax with your failures and aim for achievement of worthwhile goals. Forgive yourself. See yourself at your best. Keep up with yourself. Four, that winning feeling. This feeling can move mountains for you if you feel you are a good fellow who deserves success and happiness. The spirit with which you tackle projects, your feeling about the self that performs in the world of reality, almost predetermines the results of your efforts. Once it is part of your basic personality, this self-belief will pull you through crises and will revive you if catastrophe befalls you. As long as you keep stoking the fires of this feeling, you are rich. You feed your automatic success mechanism and it produces results for you. Five, good habits. Your habits added up and consolidated are you. If they are positively oriented, you are a person who gravitates toward success. If they are pernicious, you stalk failure. You can discard bad habits and develop good ones if you are willing to work hard at change. Remember, success is a habit. Confidence is a habit. Six, dedication to happiness. People dedicate their lives to different goals. Why don't you dedicate yours to happiness? Making yourself and others feel happy. Develop feelings, skills, relationships that will make you happy. You must feel that you have a right to be happy. Otherwise, consciously or unconsciously, you will put roadblocks in your way. Insist on giving yourself this right. It is your natural heritage. Don't take it away from yourself, but find your own unique prescription. Don't follow someone else's. Seven, unmask your true self. When you are driving a car 50 miles an hour down a highway, do you wear a blindfold? Of course not. But you might be going through life wearing a mask to hide your true feelings. This is a blindfold because in hiding yourself from others, you hide from yourself. You blind yourself to your potential qualities as a person. Learn to see yourself with kind eyes. You will have no need for a mask. Eight, compassion. This is one of the qualities that separates human beings from beasts, or at least it should. When you feel for others, deep in your heart, you are soaring to your most wonderful moments as a human being. Others may express their gratitude, but your real reward 
is the warm feeling you will experience toward others and toward yourself. Nine, accept your weaknesses. You may be strong, healthy, and successful, but there are no guarantees in life, and sometimes everything will go wrong for a while. Your strong self-image will befriend you, but as long as troubles mount, you will eventually feel tired and weak. Now the question is, do you accept your temporary weakness in a human way, or do you blame yourself for it, feeling that you are a total failure? This is a key question. If you cannot permit weakness in yourself, then you can never feel secure. Your strength is not real. You're only a fair weather friend to yourself. It is only when you accept both your weaknesses and your strength that you can reach your full stature. 10. Live through your mistakes. The man who makes no mistakes does not usually make anything. These are the words of Bishop W.C. McGee, and truer words I do not know. If you want happiness, you must overcome any perfectionist streak that decrees that you must never make mistakes. If Babe Ruth had condemned himself every time he struck out, he would have destroyed his confidence in his ability to hit home runs. Learn to laugh gently at yourself when you blunder. If striking out in the game of life doesn't bother you, then you can learn to hit home runs. 11. Be yourself. It is only when you are yourself that your life has real meaning. Stop basing your personality on the smiles and frowns of other people. Give yourself your own smile of approval. Strengthen your self-image, and the possible criticism of others will bounce off you. Ignore people who try to bully you. You must understand that they seek to do this out of their own weakness. You are truly successful only when you live your life the way you wish. 12. Never retire. Ancient civilizations devised means of measuring time. They're not new. And these statistical devices of years, months, days, weeks, hours, cannot tell us whether we are really old or young. If you fill your days with exciting activities, you remain young even if you are in your 80s. If everything bores you, you are old even if you are only 18. Never go into an artificial state of hibernation. That is unnecessary. It will only weaken your self-image. As mentioned earlier, the material in this program is derived from many different lectures, seminars, and workshops given by Dr. Maltz. What you will hear now is Dr. Maltz answering a series of questions on self-image psychology. The first question posed to him was, how do you know your real self when you're trying to identify your self-image? How do you know yourself? You begin to know yourself when you give yourself the chance to develop and make your image grow when you tackle problems. If you let negative feelings overcome you and complain that life was unkind, that you were born unlucky, then you are not yourself. Then you become less than what you really are and you make your image shrink in size. How does one deal with moodiness? We all have these ups and downs which we call moods, which depend on the image we have of ourselves as we meet the pressures and challenges of living. At low periods, we become more critical at times, critical of others and of ourselves. We are more irritable and care little about other people. We are depressed, unhappy, ashamed of our self-image. The high periods are periods of hope and excitement, periods of belief and self-confidence. We exultantly tackle the day's problems to reach our daily goal with assurance. Here we have a self-image we're proud of, one we can live with. We feel on top of the world until we dispose of the surplus energy we have stored. Then subsequently, we may fall into another slump of depression and discouragement. Up and down, you should understand that your behavior depends on your self-image and that this image can change back and forth like your face, depending on whether it is tense or relaxed. Since your moods are part of the natural business of living, no matter how dismal the outlook may seem to you when you are low, remember this. You will feel better presently if you can reactivate the success mechanism within you. At this stage of depression, use your imagination. Sit down in a chair and relax. Go into a room of your mind. See in your mind your past successes. Picture them and feel them. This will help you improve your self-image, retaining confidence and happiness.
How does a person banish jealousy of another individual's ability? All of us, at some time or other, are victims of jealousy, of resentment of the other fellow's capabilities. Jealousy is a very destructive, negative feeling that forces one to make his image shrink to the size of a microbe. It is of no value unless you have a goal of your own, within your own capabilities, when you are stirred on to make something of yourself. In that respect, that kind of jealousy is a form of inspiration, simply because you have a goal in view. It is a variation of competition and is not jealousy in the true sense. Jealousy per se is destructive because you have no goal and you become resentful of another person, hating that person for no reason whatsoever. You overcome jealousy, you overcome defensiveness only by thinking of some goal you can achieve. In that way, you translate a negative thought into a positive goal. Jealousy without a goal in view means many harmful things. It means frustration, fear. Too many of us hate and are jealous because we fear that we will be inadequate. But no one can make you feel that way unless you want to be that way. Jealousy also means loneliness. If you will remember that no one can make you lonely without your consent, you will also remember that no one, no one can make you jealous without your consent. I have a terrible feeling of being alone. Why? What can I do to overcome this? There are three kinds of loneliness. Loneliness in relation to the outside world, loneliness in relation to another person, and finally, loneliness in relation to yourself, by far the worst kind of loneliness. It means an image you're ashamed of, an image you can't live with. Negative feelings produce an unhappy self-image which causes you to move away from the world, from others, from yourself, creating limitation in communication with yourself and the outside world where you belong. Loneliness means eviction. You cast yourself away from yourself, and this often brings about a kind of stubbornness in refusing to return to yourself. Loneliness can come from grief when you refuse to let go of it. If this happens, it is no longer a catastrophe of yesterday, but the agony of a lifetime. You must return to the present. You must refuse to separate yourself from yourself, from others, from reality. The business of living is to be part of humanity at all time, come what may. To return to yourself, rising above failure and grief, communicating with yourself at all times, rebuilding a new self-image you can live with, an image you can be proud of because you can see it grow as tall as you want it to be. You see it grow now, today, as you reach for goals you can achieve, remembering that no one can make you lonely without your consent. Remember, all of us are lonely at times. However, the chronic feeling of loneliness is a symptom of the failure mechanism. You deliberately cut off the lines of communication with yourself and with others. This is an ineffective way of protecting yourself against exposure and hurt. More creative living means establishing an adequate self-image. Accept yourself and you will find ways of having others accept you too. Regardless of your feelings, you should force yourself to mingle with others. Develop a social skill that will add to other people's pleasure. When the lonely person forces himself to contribute actively, he will find that most people are friendly and will accept him. This experience of acceptance enables him to accept himself. Remember these points. When you walk away from yourself and from others, you are walking away from reality. When you come to know others, it is not necessary to build defenses or erect pretenses. Be a part of others. Share your experiences with other human beings. It will take you away from overabsorption in yourself. Loneliness means limitation. Loneliness reflects unbelief in yourself. Loneliness makes you look backward. You should be living in the present with an eye to the future. When you are a part of others, you become your better self. Don't ponder over how you're going to say something when you have a firm goal in your mind. Just open your mouth and say it. Improvise as you need to. Don't think too much before you act. Put your goal foremost in your mind and then act. 
Correct your actions as you go along, not before you start. Stop criticizing yourself after each action, no matter how simple. Use criticism sparingly, not continuously. Make a habit of speaking louder than usual. Inhibited people are notoriously wispy voiced. You don't have to shout at people, but just try to raise the volume of your voice. Let people know you like them. Compliment at least three people a day. If you like what someone is wearing or doing, say so. Be direct. Is there a quick capsule formula for winning? Here are two rules for developing a winning spirit. One, get tough. Get out into the world and try to survive the hard knocks of living. Get in touch with other people. Relate to them. Stay in the world without giving up your freedom. Winning seldom comes immediately. Everyone knows defeat sometimes. You must be tough. Two, set goals. How can you win if you don't know what you want? You must set goals. This will give you a sense of direction. If your goals mean something to you, you will feel enthusiasm for attaining them. And this is a winning feeling. Your goals need not be concrete. Some important goals may be invisible. Thinking through an idea, forgiving a friend, imaging past successes. If you set meaningful goals, you're on the way to a winning spirit. If you are tough enough to attain them, then you are there. A basic characteristic of a strong self-image is movement. Movement into the world of people, creative movement into another stimulating world inside your mind. Set your goals, plan your growth. Stop saying no, no to things you want to achieve. If you feel you have rights, if you feel you are worthy of happiness, you will develop these capacities for movement and for growth. You strengthen your self-image through enterprise. You motivate yourself with your goals. You must every day treat yourself to a better you, giving yourself appreciation, self-acceptance, praise. You then are able to launch yourself forward into enterprises with enthusiasm and with a belief in yourself that may make them successful enterprises. The opposite of enterprise is emptiness, days of boredom, days of apathy, days of non-living, even though you have the gift of life. Each day you must resolve to move toward enterprise. How does one quickly achieve peace of mind? You start with your own self-image. No escape each day into the room of your mind will refresh you if you do not approve of yourself. Tranquility of the spirit means a stronger self-image. Here are three ways to guide you towards peace of mind. One, realize that peace of mind is a possibility. Make it a basic goal. Two, escape each day, if only a little. Seek out enjoyable activities and stop holding grudges. Three, work to build your self-image. To be wealthy in spirit, you must strengthen your self-image. You must see yourself at your best in your imagination. You must recapture your past successes in your imagination. To have peace of mind, you must build strong beliefs. You must believe in yourself, believe you are a person of dignity. This self-belief is essential to peace of mind. Keep working to develop this positive attitude towards yourself. Then, when you wake up in the morning, you'll enjoy your day because you are at peace with yourself. Because day after day, you are creating the best world you can. There are four cardinal principles of psychological and spiritual relaxation. One, forgive others. No strings attached. No sense of condemnation. No forgiveness on the installment plan. A clean slate. Two, forgive yourself. You're only human. Accept yourself with kind eyes. Three, see yourself at your best, a person of confidence, not at your worst, a person of frustration. Four, keep up with yourself always, never with someone else. Stop criticizing yourself. Stop criticizing others.
following are two exercises that Dr. Maltz recommended for his self-image psychology program. The first exercise is a relaxation technique. As Dr. Maltz said, to have a strong self-image, you must have peace of mind. And without the ability to relax, you cannot have peace of mind. Now, here's Dr. Maltz with an easy-to-follow relaxation exercise. Lie down and imagine your body is a series of rubber balloons. There are two valves in your feet. They open and air escapes from your legs. Your legs collapse until they are empty and lie flat against the bed. A valve now opens in your chest and your whole body begins to collapse limply against the bed. Continue this exercise with the arms, the neck, and the head. You don't have to do this in bed. If you're in the office, try to fix a picture in your mind's eye of yourself lying in bed doing the exercise. You will actually feel the relief from being relaxed. Physical relaxation leads to mental relaxation. When practiced daily, it gives us that relaxed attitude which allows us to better control our actions. When you get home from a day's work, sit down with a pencil and pad and write down the following. Change. C-H-A-N-G-E. Then say to yourself, this is a most important word for me. I am unique and as different from others as my fingerprints. Can I change? Yes, I can. I deserve a second chance. I may be a mistake maker, but I'm also a mistake breaker. I shall accept myself for what I am. I shall see myself with kind eyes from now on. I shall forget past failures, and I shall be the better me from now on. I shall get more creative living out of life. What did I forget today? Did I forget to be happy, that I can make a habit of happiness? Did I forget negative feelings like hatred, resentment, frustration? Did I forget to rise above my mistakes of yesterday? Did I forget to be compassionate? Did I forget to be self-confident? Did I forget to be myself and not try to be someone else? Did I forget that I am creative and can improve my self-image through the power of my imagination? Did I forget to relax and improve my self-image? Realize that your principal goal in life is to live and be happy, and that confidence is a state of happiness that is a goal in itself. Confidence means positive thinking plus positive doing and trying. You must have a goal. You must have great desire, a feeling of enthusiasm that you can reach your goal. Imagine that you are already there. You must think in terms of success, not failures. Evoke the feelings of past successes. If you feel successful, you will act with confidence. Acquire the habit of confidence. Confidence is built on confidence. Remember the saying, nothing succeeds like success. Reactivate your servo mechanism to relive the confidence of the past. Go back in your memory and relive a successful experience. If you insist you've never had a successful experience, Imagine in your mind how you would look and act if you were successful in some undertaking. The mind cannot tell the difference between a true experience and one vividly imagined in detail. If you insist on worrying, then worry constructively about a positive goal, slowly and surely achieving your goal, saying to yourself that it is possible, not impossible, and that with a little courage and faith, you will reach it. Accept negative feelings as a challenge. Remember, confidence is the capacity to rise above negative feelings, even failures. Substitute a good feeling of confidence for a bad feeling of frustration. Make a habit of it. You can do it now. Don't replay an old record of frustration and unhappiness in your mind. Substitute a new record of confidence and happiness. Resolve to bounce back. You must be resilient under pressure. 
Frustration should be a stimulus for you to rise above it. Have enthusiasm for change. Every day your self-image has to change, adapting itself to the situation in hand. Refuse to let anyone tamper with your destiny. See creative goals in focus. You overcome frustration by thinking of a new worthwhile goal you can reach. Investigate your potential. Look in the mirror and try to find your courage, self-respect, and compassion. Leave the regrets of yesterday behind. Move from yesterday into the great adventure of today, now. You are a goal striver. Become involved in a new goal. Utilize the servo mechanism within you to succeed. Steer your mind to a successful completion of a goal. Feed your assets. Remember your confidence, your belief in yourself that you can rise above a mistake. Concentrate on one thought at a time, one action at a time, one goal at a time. The more you concentrate on a useful goal, the less time you will have for frustration. Create the better you. You are your own plastic surgeon. Remove the scars from your self-image. Greatness consists in striving to be great. You are great when you reach your goal no matter how small. You've been running away from life and yourself. Go on the adventure of finding yourself and your true worth. Go into a room of your mind. Develop the negative of yourself into a person who can fulfill himself, who can find his own self-respect. Turn the negative you, the failure you, into a positive you, a successful human being. You can do it. Look at yourself with kind eyes. You are neither a superior nor inferior person. You are you, capable of fear but capable of rising above it. Capable of failure but capable of rising above that too. A failure is a stimulus for you to make something of yourself. At the beginning of this course, we talked about going into the playhouse of your mind. There, you are to create the kind of images that will show yourself and the world around you in a positive light. In the playhouse of your mind, you are free to put anything you want on stage. You can write yourself as the hero or villain of a play whose plot will be the story of either success or failure. I hope that you are working already on creating a self-image that is real for you, based realistically on your abilities and your faults. You should be cultivating your self-image, nurturing it with experiences of success from the past, and tending it with the anticipation of accomplishing your goals of the present and the future. You can change, but you must be willing to work at change. So work hard in the powerful world of mental pictures and you'll improve yourself in the world of reality. You can now go forth and create a new and better world for yourself.